Hey guys, I'm in the STEM Outreach Centre at Kingston University and in this video we are going to be dissecting a fish head and looking at the gas exchange system. Here we have our fish head and down here we have a diagram of our fish head. So here we can see the gill cover here and inside you can see all of the gills protected by the gill cover. There are lots in there and you can see the colour shows us that it's very, very highly concentrated with capillaries. Now water will flow in through the mouth and it will flow out passing over the gills out here behind the gill cover. The way that the fish head moves the mouth and the gills together creates a mechanism for the water to flow over the gills. As the mouth opens, the floor of the mouth moves downwards. This increases the pressure and forces the water to move out over the gills. If we want to look at the gills and the gill filaments in more detail, then we have to dissect the fish head. You can see there are a large number of gill in here. And we can, and we can start, start by taking the gill off. And you can see the colour shows there's a high concentration of blood vessels and lots of gills in there. These are all attached at this end and this end with a strong firm structure going over here, the gill arch. We can now look at the structure of one gill in more detail. When the gill is in the air, all of the gill filaments are stuck clumped together. But when we put it in water, we can see them fanning out. We can see that they're not clumped together. There's a lot more distance between them all, allowing the flow of water over the individually separated filaments. So here, this bit here corresponds to this bit here and all of these feathery bits you can see coming off here are the gill filaments. Down, down here we are going to have blood flowing to and from the heart and each of these go up the individual filaments as well. As it picks up oxygen, it goes from deoxygenated to oxygenated blood, and we can see that the water will flow across gills. Going across each filament are lamella. These are there to increase the surface area. This will allow for more gas exchange to take place. Here we have a close-up of lamella. So the filament is this bit here. And the lamella are the ones going across here. So we're doing a close-up of these little bits here. Now, we have our oxygenated blood going this way and our deoxygenated blood going this way and our flow of water like this. And in the middle, we have all of the capillaries which are going to be picking up the oxygen. A fist ensures it gets maximum oxygen from the water by using the counter-current principle. The flow of the water over the lamella is not in the same direction as the flow of blood. We have the flow of blood going from deoxygenated to oxygenated. It will come in here, go round and then back out that way to be pumped to the rest of the fish's body. So the flow of blood is in this direction and the flow of water is in this direction. In the, in the opposite, opposite direction, direction, the countercurrent direction, to the flow of blood. This is going to help ensure that maximum gas exchange takes place. It is going to increase the diffusion of oxygen from the water into the blood. When we are here and the blood is just about to start flowing over the lamella, no oxygen has yet been removed. So it has a high concentration of oxygen. The oxygenated blood that we have here also has a high concentration of oxygen. 
for diffusion to take place, the concentration in the water needs to be higher than the concentration in the blood. As the oxygen is removed, diffusing from the water into the blood, the concentration of oxygen in the water is decreased. It will then pass over the deoxygenated blood in the capillaries. As it passes over here, the concentration of oxygen in the water is at its lowest, but it is still higher than the concentration of oxygen in the deoxygenated blood, meaning that diffusion from water into the blood of oxygen can still take place. When, when concentrations are equal, diffusion stops. The countercurrent principle allows the water to always have a higher concentration of oxygen than the blood, meaning maximum diffusion can take place. Here we're going to compare a countercurrent principle with a hypothetical parallel situation. Here we have the percentage of oxygen movement along the gills. And as water moves along the gills, the percentage of oxygen in there decreases. While it increases in the blood. However, in a parallel situation where the flow of blood and the flow of water would be the same. As soon as that concentration of oxygen dissolved in either the water blood equalized, then diffusion would stop. And the percentage of oxygen in the blood would be much lower than in the situation we have the countercurrent principle. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.